This is the goddess the world needs right now. Time to get your Saraswati on. Where my ladies in their 40s and 50s at? Okay, this is the sixth video in our exploration of the Divine Feminine. If you'd like to start at the beginning of the series, you can click the link up here. And if you're new here, what's up? I'm Kai, and this is Stephanie Danger. She serves as an alter ego to help you give the finger to the status quo and live life by your own rules. This series explores different goddesses of yoga and how they can help us connect to our divine feminine power. Today, we are going to connect with our inner Saraswati. She is the goddess of creativity, knowledge, and insight. Her name means the flowing one, and her energy endows us with the powers of speech and wisdom. Saraswati is one of those goddesses we can all benefit from tapping into. So as we prepare to connect with goddess Saraswati, let's take a couple of deep breaths in. to get grounded and open ourselves to her wisdom. Taking one more deep breath in as we invite Saraswati to unveil herself within and outside of ourselves. May the manifestation of her Shakti awaken us to our own heart and may she show up for us in magical and unexpected ways. In Hindu mythology, Lord Brahma created the cosmic universe, except when he finished, it lacked order. Finished, it lacked order. And it looked like he realized he needed help organizing the universe, but he had no idea how to do that. So in desperation, he turned inward and asked, how can I create order from this chaos? From within, the goddess spoke and said, through knowledge because from knowledge will come creative action. And so goddess Saraswati emerged from Brahma's mouth. Her being vibrated with the mantra, Oh, And that sound carried on Brahma's breath eventually manifested as all the worlds. The sun, the moon, and the stars were born. The oceans emerged and seasons were created. Okay, so from this point in the story, there are two versions of what happens. In one version, Brahma and Saraswati are married, but Brahma is always angry because Saraswati would rather spend her days immersed in knowledge and study rather than cooking and cleaning for him. And so eventually he divorces her. Some say this story exists because of the societal need to attach every woman to a man and every goddess to a god. You decide. In the second version, Saraswati is Brahma's first creation, wisdom. When he creates her, he falls in love with his own creation because he can't believe he's created something so supreme. He ends up in awe of her and she becomes his guide, but never his consort. Unlike other goddesses eager for matrimony and motherhood, Saraswati is aloof in her desire for a traditional relationship. Her deepest satisfaction comes from being in touch with sources of inspiration and creativity. She loves solving intellectual and artistic problems and discovering connections and new paradigms. Saraswati women are often unconventional and tend to break rules, but not because they're trying to break rules, but because because their willingness to look at things in unconventional ways lends itself to rule breaking. She has no attachments to anything but the desire to explore more. It's also important to note that Saraswati women are not always artists or thinkers. Often they are muses. In this role, they are able to ask the right questions to ignite Saraswati's flow in another person. Teachers are a perfect example of this. They know how to ask questions that birth new ways of thinking 
and different ways of looking at a problem. The goddess I naturally resonate with is Dorga, the warrior goddess. She is featured in episode four of this series. I will put a link up here to her episode so you can check it out. I like to combine Dorga's energy with the powers of speech that come with tapping into Saraswati. I am not much for superficial conversations, so I call on Saraswati to help me engage in purposeful gab. It makes conversations more stimulating and deep. Speaking of speaking, I am going to focus the exploration of Saraswati around speech because uh, words, they are at the core of one of the world's biggest struggles right now. As the goddess of fluid thoughts and words, she is the part of the divine feminine who grants humanity to humans. And if you stop to think about it, all of human creation is birthed from the place of thought and speech. One of Saraswati's gifts is the power to speak the truth. And when you are in tune with her, speech will come from the place of truth inside yourself. As with everything, there is a shadow side to each goddess and the shadow side of Saraswati is particularly interesting. When people speak from Saraswati's shadow, there is an increase in density and confusion. Think propaganda, lies, disinformation, internet chatter, false rumors, basically all varieties of spin. Language is creative power and her shadow can be very persuasive and compelling. We shape reality through narrative. Every story we tell will literally change some piece of our world for better or for worse. This is why it's so important to nurture Saraswati's light. She gives us the ability to separate truthful, liberating knowledge and words from the kind of information that creates fear and confusion. How important is that in this day and age? We've all seen words destroy reputations, break family ties, bring down governments and start wars. It's a casual put down, a big or small lie and our own negative self-talk. These all linger in the heart and either subtly or dramatically affect the way we hold ourselves and others. One of the simplest ways we can serve the greater good is to ask Saraswati to speak through us. We do this understanding how powerful every thought and word we put out into the world is. Saraswati can help you discern the ways language can be used to liberate you and others. And if you practice this regularly, she will often show up as moments of sudden understanding. She will give you the words that open hearts and loosen stuck energies. When words flow easily, when ideas come up out of nowhere, when you say something so powerful and profound that it surprises even you, you are experiencing Saraswati. In Sally Kempton's book, Awakening Shakti, there is an exercise that invites you to consider your patterns with speech. I think it's a great exercise to revisit from time to time. First, you recall moments over the last couple of days when your words felt authentic, true, wise, and connected to your heart. Can you remember the feeling this produced in you and in the people you interacted with? Examples of inspired speech are offering clarity, giving genuine praise, explaining something accurately, or speaking kindly or being truthful, saying something funny or witty. George Clooney married Amal Alamuddin this year. Amal is a human rights lawyer who worked on the Enron case, was an advisor to Kofi Annan regarding Syria, and was selected for a three-person UN commission investigating rules of war violations in the Gaza Strip. So tonight, her husband is getting a Lifetime Achievement Award. And then you ask yourself what gift you gave others through those words. Then we flip the script. Without judgment, notice some of the habitual speaking patterns you tend to fall into, like speaking to fill the silence.
being unnecessarily sarcastic, gossiping negatively, complaining habitually, saying things you don't mean, but saying them anyways because you feel like they are more acceptable. Notice when you felt inhibited about speaking or when you chattered. Then ask yourself, is there a speech habit you'd like to change? And is there a gift of speech you'd like to receive? I have an example that I experienced that kind of covers both sides of this exercise. It was a recent interaction I had with my mom. She was upset about something and I don't know if this has happened to you yet, but as your parents get older, the roles kind of reverse and you become more parent-like, they become more childlike. As a result, I tend to judge or nag her more than I probably should. But for whatever reason, this time when she was expressing herself, I feel like Saraswati took over and I was moved to just listen. And then as I asked her questions based on what I was observing and hearing her say, pretty quickly we got to the deeper reason behind this pain she was feeling. It was pretty profound. Tap into Saraswati. One of the really interesting things I found in that situation with my mom is that it's easier for you to stay detached from your emotions when you're in a charged situation. Saraswati is dispassionate, but like not in a bad way. It's why Saraswati people make good mediators. Her passion is in seeking answers and solving problems. She's not into getting all caught up in drama. I recently did a video on intuition. I will link it up here. I think you should watch it. Intuition is so important for everybody to use more. And Saraswati is the goddess who can help us strengthen our intuition. She is subtle. And so her voice is often hidden. When she takes form as intuition, she can show up as a small voice, but it's often hard to hear behind the chatter of the mind. So if you want to receive an answer or an inspiration, you often have to like prime it. You can prime intuition by asking yourself a question and then holding still until the answer comes. An important part of this practice is being able to wait for the answer to arise. Thoughts will arise when you ask a question, but you also want to go past the thinking mind, especially the inner critic, so that you can arrive at a place of deep interior listening. It's a combination of quiet focus and patience. Another way to tap into your intuition is to practice automatic writing. I actually find this one kind of fun. You ask a question and then start writing without censoring. So everything that comes to you, just write, 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 write until you have a pause. This is also a great practice to do if you're struggling with writer's block. You can also play with writing with your non-dominant hand. My main suggestion when working with Saraswati is to slow down. Her guidance is always available to you, but it requires you step out of the fast pace of modern life to hear it. Here are some things that you can call on Saraswati for help with. Fertility, which is the ultimate in creation. Any kind of writing, be it music, poetry, a letter. She can help you access your ancient wisdom, quiet your mind, enhance your overall creativity, and do well on exams. Saraswati is knowledge itself. If you have kids in school, this could be a fun way to help them with their studies. You can can suggest they meditate on her yantra, which is her visual symbol, or you can repeat her mantra. that is specifically for studying and knowledge. It's one I really like. Now, your kids may look at you like you're weird, but my response to that is, what do you have to lose? For all you know, your grades may improve. 
For any creative work, you can gain favor with Saraswati by blessing the tools of your craft. It will infuse your art with some of her magic. You can bless a musical instrument, paint brushes, or even your computer. A couple of other ways to connect with Saraswati, I've created a small playlist with some Saraswati women you can watch for inspiration. And the latest design in the Stephanie Danger Goddess collection features the Saraswati mantra. The one I'm using is Om I'm Saraswati Namaha. And it means I connect to the force behind my creative expression. Saraswati is an elegant goddess. She loves beautiful things and soothing music. So if you want to set the stage before you ask her for help, create a soothing and inviting environment either internally or externally. Then once you feel ready, call her name softly three times. Saraswati. 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 Wait for a few moments and then call her name again a little louder. Saraswati. You'll feel her respond. Simply remain open to her love and guidance. Love you.